Hey guys, welcome back to our beginner dog training series. My name is Jessica. If you are new here, thank you so much for being here. I am the furry family coach. I'm a pet parent coach and positive reinforcement dog trainer. So welcome, thank you for being here. If this is your first time on my channel, don't forget to hit that subscribe button. When you do a bell will pop up, select all notifications. That way YouTube can notify you every time I post a new video. Again, if you are new here, or even if you're returning, I really appreciate each and every one of you. So this video is a continuation in our beginner dog training series. And in this video, we're gonna be teaching our dog how to lie down. And I know that these are relatively simple cues to teach your dog, but I really encourage you, I'm highly encouraging you not to skip them. They are so important because the reason that we're starting out with these is because we are building a bond with our dog. We're building communication with our dog, which is no easy feat in a lot of cases. So your dog needs to get to know you. You need to get to know your dog. So the first couple of weeks in our beginner dog training series, we really are trying to put in place and, and get you to learn your dog better and get, let your dog learn you a little bit better because good communication between you and your dog is invaluable. So let's go ahead and get started in this video. This is the fourth video in the beginner dog training series. We're gonna teach our dog how to lie down. So what we're gonna do, I'm gonna lure Kim over here. Hey princess, you come over here. Can you help me out? Good girl. Yeah. Good job. Okay, so we did a sit in our last video. So we're gonna kind of work. <laughs> She's already lying down. So what I need to do is actually get her up, which is going to be in the next video. We're gonna be talking about getting our dog to stand up and stand up without walking towards you, right? Because there is a difference. So. Let me get her up. We're gonna do, we're gonna talk stand. Yeah, that's a good stand, isn't it? Okay, so what we're gonna do, we're gonna start in a sit position and we're gonna take our reward, our lure. So I just have this little treat here and we're gonna take it and we're going to start dropping it down. Yes, good girl, yes, that's my good girl. So as you can see, I'm just taking the reward, I'm taking the treat and I'm dropping it down until she actually has her body on the ground. And when that happens, as soon as that happens, I'm gonna reward and praise as you just saw. So let's try that again. And the, the more you do this with your dog uh, and the better you start getting at it, after a couple of times, you wanna start adding in a cue word. And let me tell you, I also like to incorporate hand signals. Now, you may not have a deaf dog you may have never had a deaf dog and that's okay that's totally fine sometimes as dog age dogs age they may lose their hearing sometimes dogs are born with no hearing sometimes things unfortunately happen and dogs lose their hearing and i was very fortunate in the very first dog that i ever had she was deaf and so i trained with Sit. Down. Yes, that's my good girl. So start incorporating a word. Now, when we incorporate hand signals, you can use all kinds of things. I use this for sit, which is just a finger pointing down. So when I, I want to change that up for actually let, lying down. So what I tend to do um, is, is do a motion with my hand where my hand is flat and I kind of push it down to, down towards the ground. And that's what I use. There are other trainers that use other hand signals for different cues. It's just the one I prefer. And I would recommend that you find something that suits you, that you're gonna remember easily, that everyone in the household is going to do together. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get her up again. Let's see, some of these treats are a little big, so I gotta break them up. Stand. Yes, good girl. Okay. So I'm gonna do this down again, but I'm going to incorporate 
a hand signal. Down. Yes. And just start doing this with your hand as you're saying the word down, giving the reward and praising. It can be a lot to do all at once. So I encourage you to get the um, lure down to where your dog is doing really well and you start actually alternating times that you're using a food reward because of course we don't always and forever every single time we ask our dogs to do something to have to reward with food we want to start uh, switching it up and getting these cues uh, done without having to reward eventually so the way we do that is by at first until we are really really good like 99 percent you're getting a exactly what you want from your dog we're going to continue to reward every time after that we're going to start alternating maybe every fourth time and then as we continue to um, see that our dog is still reacting exactly the way we want them to and uh, giving us the behavior that we want and we'll move it down to every third time, every second time, then maybe every other time, and then we can kind of really do it every every once in a while, right? So that is the goal with each and every cue that you teach your dog, this one included. But when we're doing that, when we start alternate, alternating rewards, we can start incorporating with our hand, a hand signal. And depending on your dog, depending on how quickly you guys pick this up, you can start the hand signal right away. Sometimes, like I said, it can be difficult to juggle all these things. So if you forget every once in a while, don't beat yourself up over it. Um, but I do highly encourage everyone to learn both verbal cues as well as hand signal cues because I think they can be very, very good to have on hand uh, in the back of your pocket, <laughs> in your back pocket, just in case. So we're gonna do this again. I might get Kenneth to stand. Good girl. Yes, it's my girl. Which we're actually gonna learn in the next video. But uh, again, we're building bonds here. We're building communication. Down. Down, yes, that's my girl. So if you're not getting exactly what you want, don't reward. Start over again like I just did here. It's a lot easier for your dog to get in a down position, depending on the dog. For my dog, it's easier for her to get in a down position uh, from a sit position. She just doesn't like to do it from a stand position. I see her do it every once in a while, but it's okay. Work with your dog. Don't work against your dog. So if you know that your dog is going to prefer to get into a down position from a sit, get them in a sit and then a down. If you know that your dog is totally fine going from all four down on the ground, that's wonderful too. You can expect that from them. Um, but again, it is a learned behavior. That's why we're doing this. I do want to encourage everyone. Let me I know you've been such a good girl. Thank you. All right, I'm gonna close the bag for now, okay? I'm gonna close the bag. Put them away, all gone. All right, so I do wanna encourage you again, like I've been saying in all of these videos, dogs are very situational. So I want you to do this uh, I want you to get really good at it. And maybe you're, you're typically training in your living room like I do. Then I want you to go around to your bedroom, to your kitchen, to your bathroom, wherever it may be. I want you to try this with your dog and get really good at it all around your house. And then I want other people to be able to do it inside of your house as well. So if you have other people that live with you, make sure they're able to get the same responses using the same verbal cues and or hand cues from your dog. I also want you to start adding a distraction. Once you're really good, once you, you're, you and your dog have it down, you've been all around the house, you know your dog is on point and can do a cue um, with or without a treat, I want you to start adding in distraction. Maybe that's another dog in your home. Maybe you have a multi-dog household. If you do, I always recommend training separately. So keep your dog occupied with some sort, one dog occupied with some sort of enrichment while you're training the other dog and then switch, right? So, uh, the dogs, are, multiple dogs are distractions, just like a squirrel would be outside. So work with some distractions inside of your house, then go outside. Try not to add any additional distractions at first because being outside on its own is a huge distraction. Work with a leash, work without a leash in your backyard as long as it's safe, of course. If you have a fenced in backyard and you can work without a leash, go ahead and do that. Some people may not be able to and that's perfectly fine. You're gonna have to work with a leash. If you don't have a yard to work in, 
I would highly recommend that you uh, suit your dog up, put your harness on, put your leash on inside the house and work on these cues before you go outside because that is something else that your dog is going to have to overcome. And you might think that it's nothing. You might be like, oh, well, my dog knows that when they're outside, they have their leash and harness on. But guess what? That's something different for your dog. So that's something else that the two of you need to overcome. So don't, don't overlook any, anything that seems completely mundane to you may not be to your dog. So don't overlook these things and make sure that you're taking them into account when you are training with your dog. They can be incredibly important and they can make or break whatever you're working on with your dog. I also wanna remind you that anytime you are working with your dog in any training cue, whatever it is that you are doing, I don't recommend working for more than about 10 to 15 minutes at a time. You can get frustrated, your dog can get frustrated, you can get bored, your dog can get bored. 10 to 15 minutes at a time is really all I recommend. And you can do this multiple times a day and you can work on multiple cues in that 10 to 15 minutes as well. That's perfectly fine. But I do want to again say, I know you just heard me say it, if you're frustrated, your dog has already been frustrated. So end on a high note, end with something that you know your dog is really good at and can do maybe a sit. Pretty much every dog is really good at a sit. Again, unless, you're working with a dog who maybe has some arthritis or mobility issues, then you want to work on something else. You want to end on something else that you know your dog is really good at. Reward and praise and end on a good note. That way, when you go into your next training session, you're both pumped and ready to go. I really hope you enjoyed this video. Please let me know in the comments what brought you to this video. If this is the first video that you're seeing in the beginner dog training series, there will be a link to the playlist in the description below. Definitely check that out. I want you to start from the beginning because even though these seem really simple and easy, they're building communication between you and your dog. They're building a bond between you and your dog that cannot be overlooked. It's not something that you can just skip over and get right to the hard stuff. I highly encourage you to start with these really seemingly simple things with your dog and build that communication before going on to anything more difficult. So definitely start from the beginning of the playlist and work your way through. Again, the link to that playlist is in the description. Also in the description is a link to my group. Join it, please, because I wanna know more about you and your dog, and I want you to be able to share the wins, and I want you to be able to share what you're working on, and maybe if you're struggling with something, because I wanna be able to help you. And the best way to do that is by joining the group, which there is a link in the description below. Also, while you're doing that, while you're training, take pictures, take video, and share it on social, and tag me. My Insta, my Insta handle is right down here. So tag me on Insta. I'd love to be able to see what you're working with, and, don't forget to give this video a thumbs up or a thumbs down. Maybe you don't like it and that's okay too. You gotta let me know. Just hopefully it's a thumbs up and <laughs> hit that subscribe button. It's right down there. Hit the subscribe button. When you do, a bell will appear. Click the bell, select all notifications, become part of the furry family and select all notifications. That way you get notified every single time I post a new video on YouTube. Thank you so much for being here with me. I really do wanna know what you're working on with your dog. Maybe you just got a dog or maybe you've had a dog for a while and you realize that you just didn't train and you really need to, and leave me a message in the comments below. I wanna know what's going on with you and your dog. Thank you so much again for watching this video and continuing to watch the playlist, which again is linked in the description, and I will see you in our next video.